Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome back to my C++ series. Over the last couple of episodes, we took a look at what the static keyword meant in certain contexts. And today we're gonna to have a look at one other context that you might find the static keyword in. And that is in a local scope. So you can actually use static in a local scope to declare a variable. And that has a bit of a different meaning than the other two statics that we've looked at. And the idea behind this meaning makes a lot more sense if you think about the two kind of considerations that we have to make when we're declaring a variable. And that is the lifetime of the variable and the scope of the variable. The lifetime refers to how long that variable will actually stick around for. In other words, how long it will remain in our memory before it gets deleted. And then the scope refers to where we can actually access that variable. So of course, if we declare a variable inside a function, for example, we can't just access it in another function because the variable we've declared is going to be local to the function we declared it in. So a static local variable allows us to declare a variable that has the lifetime of essentially our entire program. However, its scope is limited to be inside that function. And it really has nothing to do with functions in particular. I mean, you can declare this in any scope, really. I'm just using function as an example. It's not really just limited to being inside a function. It could be inside an if statement, could be anywhere. Which is why, again, there's not much of a difference between static in a function scope versus static in a class scope, because the lifetime is actually going to be the same. The only difference is that the one in the class scope, anything in the class can access it. Anything that has, anything that is inside that class scope can access that static variable. However, of course, if you declare one inside a function scope, it's gonna be local to that function instead of being local to that class. Let's jump in and take a look at some examples. So the simplest example is going to be just to create a function and then declare some kind of static variable inside it. So I'll just make static int i equals zero. What this means is that when I call function for the first time, this variable will be initialized to zero. And then on subsequent calls to functions, it's not actually going to create a brand new variable. Really easy way to check this out is if I just print the value of i, and then I increment it every time I call the function. So if we didn't have static here, what you would expect is that every time you call this function, i gets set to zero, then i gets incremented to one, and then we print one to the console. And in fact, we can test that out by just calling function a whole bunch of times here. We'll call it five times. We'll hit our five to run our program. And you can see that we get one printing five times because as I just explained, we create a variable every single time and we set it equal to zero. We then increment it to one and then we print that to the console. Now, if we were to make this static, then it's very, very similar to if we had just moved this original declaration out here. So if we run this code, and it doesn't really matter if this has static or not, in our case, it's going to be the same. If you wanna know more about what static does in that sense, you can check out the video that's linked somewhere. So if I run this code, you would expect i to be zero, incremented five times, and so you'll get one, two, three, four, five, which is exactly what you get. However, the problem with this approach is that I can access i anywhere. I could set i equal to 10 over here in between function calls, and suddenly this dramatically changes what my program does. So for cases where you want this kind of behavior, however, you do not want to give everyone access to that variable, you can declare static in a local scope. So let's get rid of this and move our i variable back into the function scope. I'm going to stick static out the front, which means that, again, the first time we, we run this function, it's going to set it equal to zero and create the variable in the first place. Then on subsequent times, it's just going to refer to that original variable. So if I run my code now, you can see I get one, two, three, four, five, and I get the exact same behavior as I did before. However, that i variable isn't visible in a global scope. It's just local to that function. Now, as for uses, some people do like to discourage the use of this because of certain reasons that I don't fully understand because I don't really see a problem with this. It definitely has its use. It's one of those things where, yes, you can achieve the exact same behavior using other methods. However, that can also be said for classes. You don't necessarily have to use classes at all to write a program. However, it does make your life easier. Same with this case. It's one of those things that you can just do to keep your code a little bit cleaner. Another example might be if you had a singleton class. So a singleton class is a class that should only have one instance in existence. If I wanted to create this singleton class without using this static local scope thing, I would have to create some kind of static singleton instance, probably a pointer at this rate. I'll set it here. 
I would have to have a, if I just wanted to return a normal reference, I would have to have a singleton reference returning get function, which was static and returned my instance after dereferencing it, of course. I would then have to actually declare this instance over here. Singleton, singleton as instance. Now I can probably set it equal to null pointer as a default. And now I have the ability, let's get rid of this. Now, of course, I have my singleton class in which I can just call singleton get and then do whatever I want with it. So suppose we had a method here called hello. Don't really know what I'm doing, just an example. We could call that hello method and everything will be well. You can see we've only got one instance of that class that we can use, so we can kind of use it statically. Now, this is quite a lot of code. You don't necessarily have to do it this way. Another way to do this with our newfound knowledge of this local static thing might be like this. We can get rid of this entirely we can get rid of this external definition of s instance as well. And then we can just expand our get function to actually create a static singleton instance and then return that instance. And there you go. We get the exact same behavior. You can see everything here stays the same. We can run our code no problem. Of course, the code is not actually going to do anything at this point, but you can see it runs successfully without crashing. And we don't really have any problems with this at all. And you can see that our code is a lot, lot cleaner. Now, of course, if you didn't have the static keyword here, then this singleton, since it is just created on the stack, would get destroyed as soon as you hit this curly bracket and then the, then the function scope ends. So this would be a grave error, especially if you're returning it by reference. If you're copying it, of course, you wouldn't really have a problem. However, since we are returning a reference to it, this would, would be a huge problem. However, by adding static, we're extending the lifetime of this to be essentially forever, which means that every time we call get, the first time it will actually construct that singleton instance, and then on all subsequent times, it will just return that existing instance. So this is a great example of where you might want to use something like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be with singletons. It can help you out a lot by replacing initialization functions where, for example, you might have to call a static initialization where, for example, you might have to call a static initialization function at some point in your program to create all of your objects so that you could actually use the static get methods and stuff like that. You can just kind of simplify that by using this in a lot of cases. So you can see there are tons of uses for this and it's really not all that bad. So feel free to use it. That's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think of this static in a local scope thing in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.